inspired me to become an illustrator happened while I was at uh, Cleveland Institute of Art, which is where I got my BFA. I went there thinking I was going to go through the game design program. I've been into video games pretty much my entire life. It's been a big influence on me. And freshman year at CIA is all foundational. And during that foundation year, you are expected to have little bits of pieces of each major that you're interested in. And during that year, I researched the game industry more, discovering that it has um, tumultuous at saying it nicely. And I decided to pivot towards illustration because that would allow me to work near that field and also explore other options that I was also interested in. My creative process is sort of stream of consciousness. Um, I will take sketches, I will just start drawing. I have concepts sometimes in mind, but I will take those drawings that I either just finish in my sketchbook and will retranslate to a painting or another piece or pull ideas from those. Um, I have a lot of different influences that will drive me to get into my sketchbook and think and learn and draw. But when it comes to making a finished piece, it's, it's a 50-50 split of I just throw the canvas down in front of me and I start working at it and see what comes out, or I have a definitive idea that I have been working on for weeks or months at a time that I will then bring to a finished conclusion. My range of influences is pr quite broad. Uh, when I was in college, I was really drawn to the modern lowbrow scene or pop surrealism. The first big name I discovered on Instagram was Alex Pardee, who has done a lot of commercial work. He does a lot of lowbrow illustration, has done album artwork, um, does a lot of t-shirt design. That brought me down a huge Instagram rabbit hole of finding other artists of similar styles. I love Craig Gleason. I love uh, Wizard of Barge. Um, at the time, I was also, and still am, really into comic books. Uh, there was a DC series of Animal Man in the New 52. The illustrator on that book at the time was Travel Foreman. And his work was, um, as far as comics go, a little more surreal, a little more graphic, horror inspired. And I'm also lately drawn to a lot of, um, what's the word? I'm blanking. It's not surrealism. Well, I'm really drawn to lately um, Polish surrealism. surrealism Polish surrealism. Um, one name that stands out that most people know that I'm going to butcher is uh, Stanislaw Beksinski, who I think passed away in the 80s or 90s. His work is a clear influence on some game series that I am also interested in, where it's um, surreal horror, really conceptual, bleak. Um, sort of landscape or creature design. And what I love about that work is it invokes concept and is a fine art approach, but in our modern era where we see a lot of digital media, and like I keep saying, I'm, inter I'm interested and invested in video games, that translates over into the creatures or characters you interact with in those games. So the my, my gamut is huge on what I look at and what inspires me to draw. Just the other day, I was listening to a band named Slug and decided I want to draw a slug. So sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's more conceptual. Um, could be from games, could be from comics, could just be from um, thoughts I've been having. It's, it's a big range. I'm a firm believer that art should be for anyone and should be hung on everybody's wall. And that is part of what influenced me and my partner to start a printing company. Um, when you think of fine art, you think of the painting in the gallery that costs $5,000, $1,500, you know, up and up and up and up. And what a lot of artists do that is both beneficial for them and for people who want to enjoy their art is make runs of prints, whether it's limited edition, G. Clay's, I mean, you could do large volume. There's a lot of print-on-demand sites these days. It, it allows more people to engage with the work that they enjoy, and it gets 
more work to the average person who could not afford the original on their walls. And that is extremely important to me. I'm not trying to get rich off of what I make. I want to share what I make with others. And a lot of what I make I would not say is on surface level serious I, when we do art fairs in the summertime. Um, what brings me the most joy is people pointing and getting um, a laugh or a positive reaction out of what they see either on my prints or what it's on our table or whatever. Um, so it's, it's about joy and engagement and um, not taking yourself too seriously. And art is hard to make and a lot of people either never tried or don't know much about it, but the more people who can have it on their walls at home, I think the better.